The more scientists understood about DNA in the last 50 years, the more what they couldn't explain, the question of where the information in the cell comes from, stood out in stark relief, as Meyer soon realized in his research. So since, since the 1950s, original life biologists have realized the central thing they have to explain is, is the origin of information. Model after model has stumbled uh, or even come to a grinding halt, has failed to explain precisely that feature of life. And so as I got into the, the topic of the origin of life, I realized that was, that was really the central question. And as I was studying how scientists develop their theories to explain the origin of the first life, I, I realized that, that, uh, that what was needed was a causal explanation for, for that, that feature of life. And I began to think more about this dictum that, that Darwin and Lyell had, that we should be explaining things by reference to presently known causes, presently acting causes. And I asked myself the question, what is the presently acting cause of digital code? What's the, what's the known cause of information generally? And what we know from uniform and repeated experience, which is the basis of all scientific reasoning in the past, about the past, is that, is that information always comes from an intelligent source. Digital information, for sure. We know it comes from programmers. But information generally always comes from an intelligent source. So by using Darwin's rule of reasoning, I concluded that the best explanation for the origin of the information necessary to build the first life is actually intelligence, Intelli what we now call intelligent design. Information, which points to a designing intelligence, is the key to the origin of life and the question that origin of life researchers must grapple with since Watson and Crick discovered DNA in 1953. Well, there's a German origin of life researcher named uh, Bernd Olaf Kuppers, and uh, he says that, that the origin of life is basically now, the problem of the origin of life is basically equivalent to the problem of the origin of biological information. And that makes sense, because if you want to explain how life arose, what you need to do is explain the features that life now has. And in 1953, when Watson and Crick elucidated the structure of the DNA molecule, they showed it had this beautiful hel helical structure, but they also um, showed that the structure of the molecule allowed it to store information in a digital form. And in 1957, Crick proposed uh, something called the sequence hypothesis. And according to the sequence hypothesis, the chemicals along the spine of the DNA molecule, those chemicals that are called bases, and there are four of them that chemists represent with the letters A, T, G, and C. Now, according to Crick's sequence hypothesis, these chemicals function just like alphabetic letters in a written text or like digital characters in a machine code. And, and that is to say that depending on how they're arranged and sequenced, these chemicals will convey instructions for building the proteins and protein machines that the cell needs to stay alive. So you've got two key features of living systems. Uh, one, are, one set of features has to do with the, the proteins and protein machines. They're basically all the tools that the cell needs to accomplish all the jobs. They perform all the functions in the cell. In, they, they perform, uh, they're involved in metabolism. They, uh, they build uh, structures and machines. They process information. They, they catalyze uh, chemical reactions. But to build those proteins, you know, they're kind of the workhorses in the cell, you need to build, you, you need instructions, and those instructions are stored on the DNA molecule. And so Watson and Quick were first to, to kind of get onto this. Crick in particular had this idea that the chemicals along the spine of the DNA molecule are storing the information, the instructions for building those proteins and protein machines. And so if you're thinking about you know, the central features of life, is certainly DNA and the proteins that it, that it builds are, 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 are right at the, the forefront of your attention as a biologist. And so if you're going to explain the origin of life, you've got to explain that. You've got to explain how the DNA and what's called the gene expression system arose. So as I looked at the problem of the origin of life, I really zeroed in and focused on those two topics and said, okay, what best explains the origin of the, digi the digital information that's in the DNA and what best explains the whole information processing system of the cell that, that takes that information and expresses it and uses it to build, to build the proteins and protein machines. So that, that's what that really the, the, the book is about. It isn't just the information within the cell that requires an explanation, but the information processing system, a highly complex world of nanotechnology that points to a designer. 
Well, the, the cell is an absolutely fascinating place. If you go inside it or you look inside it, now that we've been able to discern what's going on inside, we have here in Seattle uh, the Boeing plant. You know, and at Boeing, they use a technology called CAD CAM, Computer Assisted Design and Manufacture. And what, we, what happens in CAD CAM is you have digital code in a computer that's translated into another form of encoding that then runs uh, machinery and directs the machinery to build, to build parts that are used to, to construct airplanes. And if you think of that process, then, then you know, shift gears and start thinking about what's going on inside the cell. You have something exquisitely similar to that. CAD CAM technology at work in every cell in every living organism. You have digital code stored in the DNA molecule. It's transcribed into an RNA format. That information in RNA then goes out to the ribosome, and at the ribosome, a you know, gigantic molecular machine, uh, that information is translated into a sequence of amino acids that then fold up to form a protein machine. And these, these proteins are then you know, do all the important jobs in the cell. So you've got digital code that's transcribed, and then it's, 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 it is being used to, to, form, to build the parts that the cell needs to stay alive. So inside the cell, you've got information and, inf- and an information processing system. It's, it, it's exquisitely precise. It's very high-tech. It's all on a miniaturized scale. So what you're really looking at is nanotechnology, and that's just in the information processing system. The parts that the information processing system builds, the protein machines, are themselves uh, wonders of, of, of nanotechnology. You have little rotary engines. You have turbines. You have walking motor proteins that tow materials along tracks. You have uh, uh, sliding clamps, all kinds of mechanical devices made of proteins. And again, the information, the, the instruction set to build each one of those, those exquisitely complex miniature machines is stored in, in the DNA molecule. So you've got essentially software, uh, hardware for, for, for reading and translating it, and then you've got an, a, a, a byproduct, an outcome that's uh, in a, a miniature machine. And And that's what's going on inside the cell. The breathtaking images of what we see inside the cell today and what we know about the information code within DNA were not fathomable to scientists in Darwin's time. The idea in the 19th century, people thought that life was very simple and that it could be explained really easily. One of my favorite quotes, uh, partly because it makes me feel so smart compared to what people knew in the 1870s, was a quote from Thomas Henry Huxley who said that the cell is a simple, homogenous Glob of undifferentiated protoplasm. The idea at Darwin's time was that the cell was was very very simple, and they didn't they simply didn't know about DNA. They didn't know about the information processing system that uh, expresses the information in DNA, and they didn't know about the sophisticated nanotechnology that that information was was uh, coding, uh, you know, for. So it's it's uh, it, it's not something. What we now see today inside the cell is vastly more complex than any, anything anyone had any inkling of at the time that Darwin wrote The Origin of Species. And the, the complexity of life, and in particular the informational complexity, is something that has really defied any attempt to explain the origin of life by reference to undirected materialistic processes. Information within the cell presents a daunting challenge to Darwin's theory and provide significant evidence for a signature of a designing intelligence, as Meyer explains in his new book. One of the untold stories about the current scientific discussion about the biological origins is that there is a near consensus in the scientific community that there is not any adequate explanation for the origin of the first life. Uh, And anyone who says that they can explain it is kind of readily criticized because the models that are put forward are just not sufficient. Now, even Richard Dawkins, who is not known for his uh, moderation in defending evolutionary orthodoxy, has admitted candidly that, quote, no one knows how life first arose. And in fact, he, he, go, he went on to say in the same interview that was uh, shown in the, in the movie Expelled that he, he acknowledged that how uh, scientists might discover what he called a signature of intelligence inside the cell and that that might point to some kind of intelligence, although he wanted to make sure that everyone knew that that intelligence itself would have had to have evolved in some way by undirected processes. But what the book, my book is about, The Signature in the Cell, is about what I think is a signature of intelligence inside the cell, and that's the digital code that's stored in DNA. 
and the whole information processing system that's used to express and, and use that code to build proteins and protein machines. We know from experience, from our uniform and repeated experience, which is the basis of all scientific knowledge about the past, that there is only one known cause of digital information, and that cause is mind. It's intelligence. So when we find information encoded in the DNA molecule, the most natural and logical thing to infer is that it, too, had an intelligent source. If you think of a, a, a hieroglyphic inscription or a section of, of text in a newspaper or the code in a software program, and you trace that information back to its source, you invariably come to a mind, not to an undirected process. So when you find information of that type, digitally encoded information inside the DNA molecule, the, the most logical thing to conclude is that it, too, derived from some kind of mind and, and not an, a material process. So I think what we're looking at with the sequence-specific information inside DNA is exactly what Richard Dawkins al- alluded to as a possibility for explaining the origin of life, and that is a signature of intelligence.